In this edition of Full Funnel Fridays, we're gonna battle test inbound versus outbound marketing and what strategy is gonna work for your business. Now, if you're studying inbound and outbound marketing, people are always using inbound as a way to attract. They're always like, yeah, you just create content and magically customers will come in, they'll buy from you. I can argue that there's people that come to your website and they found your content, but they didn't buy from you, right? They didn't connect with your brand. And one of the things that I think we as marketers need to do is figure out how do you build authentic connection with our audience in inbound? How do we make sure that they understand you, they know your personality, your brand's personality, what they're gonna get should they reach out to you, what the next steps are, what is it that you guys like, what is it that you don't like? I think there's a way to bring that about in everything that you do. And the reason you wanna do that is that you wanna attract those like-minded, um, culturally fit leads into your business. You don't wanna create a, a big inbound funnel. There's all these people coming in, but they're not really the right fit. That's not the kind of people I'm looking for. I'm looking for the best of the best, the ones that I enjoy working with, or our team is looking to work with, has the right vision and the right kind of budget in mind, and they see that this is an investment into the long term of their success of their business, then hey, I wanna build that connection, right, all day. I wanna make sure those people are attracted to our brand and say, hey, I really like the way that you guys are approaching things, and I love your growth formula, whatever it is that they liked, and I think you can do that in inbound so much better than anything else out there. Now, in the same manner, I can talk about outbound being extremely valuable. The reason why most people don't like outbound is because they don't do the things that I'm talking about in this video. Number one, it is not a data-driven personalization. In other words, you didn't go and research the prospect and you didn't research the person that you're emailing and their likes and dislikes. Yeah, it takes time. It's not gonna be easy, quick two seconds, go to their LinkedIn page and just make something up, right? That's not what it is. It's like you've done your research, it's like account-based marketing. You've done your due diligence, you studied it, you know what their problems are, or at least you've seen them post content or something about the indication that they have this problem that you could fix. And then you use that in your outreach, it's gonna get you more replies than ever. Number two, there's behavioral triggers and timing that you would use to then reach out to somebody. For instance, this is something that's really powerful. I study when my potential customers, my Dream 100, are posting jobs in their company for a particular role that I can help fill or I'll be working with that person that they're filling the role for. And my outreach to the CEO would be like, hey, I noticed that you're looking for a VP of sales. What's going on there, right? Like, is there something that you're looking, is there some new initiative, is there some new growth plans, are you adding another division, are you buying a company, what's going on? How could I help you reach your goals? Yes, you know you wanna hire a salesperson or a VP of sales, and how can I make that hire extremely successful? And now they say, wow, gee, Solomon, appreciate the outreach, they appreciate me reaching out to them. You see, unlike, uh, no thanks, remove me, unsubscribe, don't follow up, that's what most people think outbound is. It doesn't have to be because I'm not gonna just spam them, okay? So that's an example of how I use that and I teach people how to use that. I help entrepreneurs find this information so they can use that in their outreach. The next thing is, is storytelling, is using one customer or a third party story that is one of my customers, a problem I help solve, and using that to find an, a similar customer. Another thing that a lot of marketers do talk about, this is a great approach, is not just keep it into one platform. It is to take that same content and maybe see if you can get them in a LinkedIn email. You see, it doesn't really matter how you get into their inbox. What matters is, is this relevant? Can they actually use this information? Is this something that you think they would need rather than connect with them? Because, hey, I'm trying to connect with people in my network that are in similar industries. I, I, I noticed that you're in the same group as me. You, you know what, it, you're, you're sending that to a thousand people. I don't think you care about connecting with anybody because the moment I accept your invitation, all you can do is send me a pitch, right? Like I presumed this was gonna happen and I don't believe anything else you're gonna say to me, <laughs> right? Like that's, that's literally what you're doing when you don't personalize it. You take these generic outreaches, you find them on Google and somebody's blog post and it worked 20 years ago, it doesn't work anymore, all right? I'm just gonna be honest with you. This is why you're not getting any luck with your outbound strategy and you think it's a terrible strategy. Don't think that. 
I think if you take time and energy and start incorporating some of these practices, you're going to get better results. Or what I would do is not do it at all. All right. Because doing more of the same thing isn't going to work. And the world has or the marketers have already made these outreaches really difficult to make it work. So if you're going to try to do it and not take the time to personalize, I would say don't do it at all. How about value driven outreach? Why not create a quick loom video explaining your solution, how it fits into the problem that you see on their website in their company. If you don't create value driven content where you actually specifically call out what you're seeing that led you to want to outreach, they're probably going to ignore everything else. Cause I've been studying this quite a lot. I've been doing this tons and tons of clients are asking us, Hey, how do we make our outbound better? My last one is respecting the frequency in which you follow up. A lot of times we have automated two days later, send this two days later, send this. We are not talking to machines. We're talking to human beings and we're not talking to human beings. We're talking C level executives in most cases, 99% of the time that have a million things on their plate. They may be on vacation. So you don't wait till the out of office vacation day come and you send the day after you don't send at six in the morning because you say every CEO wakes up at six in the morning. What you want to do is say, Hey, Bob, I reached out last week. I'm curious. I'm pretty sure this is the bottom of your, your priority list. Is this something that you would potentially see working in your company? You see, I respected it. Maybe I'll wait two weeks just because a brand is in your list, which is your account list that you're trying to target. They are part of the total addressable market. It does not mean they deserve to get treated like every other prospect in every other person's campaign. Now I want to leave you with this question, which is what's harder. This is one of those questions I get. If we only have so much budget and so much time. Tell me what's harder Solomon, because I want to do what's easy. All right. I'm, I, I can almost guarantee you, you're not the only one that wants to make things easy. And I want to do the easy one. Well, I could tell you if it's easy, it's probably not worth doing, right? The only things that are worth doing are things that are hard. It will get you the results that you're really looking for in your personal life, in your professional life, in your business. So what's easy is something that is not personalized sent in mass, take 10,000 accounts, go to LinkedIn Navigator or Apollo, download 10,000 businesses of whatever kind it is, take all of that and put it into some system and say, Hey, we fixed this problem. We have this commercial insulation uh, for whatever garage doors. We're going to send you this thing. And it's right now selling for $19 a square feet. That's easy. Is it going to work? No, it's probably not going to work. There may be one business that will respond to you. All 9,999 of them would unsubscribe or market as spam, market as junk, and you pretty much lost your domain authority, right? From an email perspective. So that's easy. Why not do that every day and buy a new domain name, right? Like you can just keep doing that until you say, okay, this doesn't work or try to do the other thing, which is Thelman, I want to get long-term success. I want to get leads coming in every morning, right? Like I want to come to work and know that I have more leads coming in that are hot, warm, want to work with us. They're looking for the exact same solution we're looking for. And I want to leverage inbound and I want to leverage outbound. I want to leverage all bound. It didn't really matter what bound it is. All it matters is they're looking for a business that solves the problem that we solve. So how do we capture the demand in the marketplace, which is the 5% of people? And how do we create demand for those people that don't even know that they're looking for this thing? They don't even know they have a problem. Once you start looking at it from this perspective, which is acquisition plus retention equals growth, all of this stuff is going to make sense to you. Then you're going to say, look, what are we doing to capture the 5%, which is demand. There's actually demand for your products and services. If you don't believe it, then we're in the wrong business, right? So you know, there's people looking for what you do all the time, but it's not the same people. Once they have their needs met, they go on, they go on to a different problem. And there's other people that haven't yet discovered that there's this problem that your company solves. That's the 95% of the people that you need to work on 24, seven, seven days a week, 365. So you can get in front of those 95 people over time. A percentage of those people will become part of your 5%. But there's all these leads that are coming in. That's part of your 5%. You need to manage and nurture them so that they don't forget you when you actually are ready to make that sale, right? So over here, we need to have a system. That's another infinity system that's working all the time 
right? It's part of the system that's working all the time as the lead comes in, sends notifications, reminders, tells the salespeople, sends them an automated message saying, hey, you know, typically when you have these kinds of problems, is there a solutions? Here's a case study, a testimonial video, whatever it is that they need to make a informed decision, you're doing that. At the same time, you got customers who just signed on, you wanna retain them. All of those things you need to do because your potential customers or your customers who just came on are just really excited to work with you, but you wanna keep that honeymoon going on infinitely, right? You want that to be for the next five years. So if that's the case, you got work to do in managing and nurturing customers. You got work to do in managing and nurturing leads. You also wanna make sure that your business is top of mind for those people that are in the market so that they're, they're Googling your service and you're getting found. And when they get found, they're getting an absolutely amazing experience on that website. So inbound or outbound, it didn't really matter because I can do outbound to create awareness. I can do inbound to get the people that are in the market. I can do outbound when they're sending me to refer somebody out there. It's always there, right? So you wanna make sure that your approach is based on something way more uh, holistic and long-term which we believe is the growth formula. We built it after having 20 years of experience building campaigns for customers and taking obscure brands and making them the market dominant player in their niche. So we're really, really excited about it. And all of the questions and all the strategy that we do here stems from the growth formula. So if you wanna learn more about the growth formula, if you wanna learn more about outbound or inbound, whether or not why you're not getting the results that you're looking for in inbound or your outbound not working, there are links on the bottom of this video, click on it. You can enter your information, have one of our strategists get on a call with you to find out if we're the right fit in the problems that you face and whether or not we can help you. And if we cannot help you, we'll guide you in the right direction because we all we care about is your success, all right? So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next Full Funnel Friday.